Hey, well, uh, good morning, everyone. On it's on, yeah. Good morning, everyone. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started with this meeting today. We uh, are, I, I'm looking over here to uh, Mr. Barney, I, Supervisor Barney, if you would like to introduce uh, who we'll be having doing the, the prayer and uh, the pledge today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a little lonely up here. I think Supervisor Chukri is going to join us via phone here shortly, and Correct. Supervisor uh, Gallardo is probably somewhere in transit, as is uh, often the case. <laughs> so, but uh, delighted to be here this morning. Um, we've, uh, uh, as, as is the case uh, in these board meetings, we get the privilege to invite people to come in and offer the invocation and lead us in the pledge. And today we have a very special guest, a returning guest, Candace Koppel, who's uh, agreed to do that. Uh, hey, Steve, welcome. Glad you're here. <laughs> um, I am on. You, oh, and, and then there's the other uh, Steve. Mr. Chairman and Mr. Barney, yes. All right. So we're, we're all here, Mr. Chairman. Yes. But uh, as you know, Candace uh, is somebody that's very special to me. She uh, served for uh, nearly six years as, uh, in, in the office, and, and much of that is the chief of staff. And for a year and a half before that time, she uh, worked with me to actually get me elected, which... In hindsight, I don't know if that was a good or bad thing, but it worked, and, and here we are. And I, I've just relied on her tremendously as a friend and a colleague, and uh, she was invaluable to me. And now she's working as the chief of staff for uh, Mayor Giles in Mesa and, and doing a tremendous job. Certainly a, a big loss for the county, but a big gain for the city of Mesa and for Mayor Giles. And just delighted that she would come back and, and lead us uh, uh, as we kick off our meeting this morning. So, Candace, if you'd come forward. All the rise, please. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful to gather today under such favor favorable circumstances. We give gratitude for the beautiful country in which we live, for the opportunities which we have to, to meet together this morning. We appreciate the sacrifice of these board members who so willingly give their time in our behalf and ask that thou might bless them with the wisdom that they need and desire. We're grateful for the citizens that have gathered to be here this morning to discuss the matters of our community and we pray that uh, we might have a spirit of cooperation and a spirit of kindness as we talk about these issues. We pray for those that are in harm's way and those that need thy help at this time that they might be guided and might be blessed. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Candace, thank you so much for your words, and I would just uh, echo uh, Supervisor Barney's comments. It was a real pleasure to work with you and wish you the very best, and uh, know that you're already off to a great start in the city of Mesa. So th thanks again. Um, today, just, just so everybody knows uh, what to expect, uh, this is, unfortunately, Supervisor Barney's last meeting with us here on the Board of Supervisors, and we will have a presentation at the, at the end of the meeting. Very much looking forward to that. Have some special guests here, um, but uh, we, with that, we will, we will get, on, on, get on with the meeting. Supervisor Chukri is uh, on the phone, joining us via phone, and with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Madam Clerk to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Barney. Here. Supervisor Chukri. Here. Thank you. Supervisor Hickman. Here. Supervisor Gallardo. Here. And Chairman Gates. Here. All right, as we, as we have oftentimes here at our Board of Supervisors uh, meetings, we're very fortunate uh, to be joined by Jose Santiago from Maricopa County Animal Care and Control, and he's brought a couple of friends who I think may be headed to the, to the Barney household in the near future. I, I don't know if that's true or just a rumor. Well, we, I've could, got, we can make that happen. I've got two teenage boys. Why wouldn't I add uh, <laughs> at home here? This might calm them down, I would assume. <laughs> 
Um, I have lovingly named these two Romeo and Juliet. Uh -huh. They had a little bit of a lover's quarrel before the meeting started, but they've made up. <laughs> and so they are both available for adoption today at the West Shelter. Uh, our little Romeo here has been available for the last couple of days. Juliet goes up for adoption this afternoon. Um, so we are hopeful that people will come out and give these two a chance. They don't have to go together. Um, they can be star-crossed lovers that are separated. But uh, their adoption fee is $200 uh, each. And we are also offering up a very unique promotion this weekend. Uh, there's some kind of a sporting event taking place. Is anybody aware of that? Um, if you come in wearing your favorite team's jersey, you can adopt an animal for 50% off. So we're going to encourage people to show their team spirit, come out and adopt. And uh, Romeo and Juliet are our, our 27th Avenue in Durango location. All right, wonderful. I thought when you mentioned the sporting event, you were referring to the Waste Management Open, but I guess there's there's some some other sporting event coming up. I don't know if everyone saw. It looks like uh, Romeo's kind of a bad boy. He's got skull and crossbones there. Uh, so I think you know buyer beware there. But um, wonderful, Jose. Thanks so much, and thanks for all that uh, that you do for us uh, in the county. Thank you guys. All right. So with if, that, Mr. we're. Chairman, we're if, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I might interrupt, I apologize. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, first and foremost apologize for not being able to be there today due to another obligation and to thank you for allowing me to phone into this meeting. Uh, and I won't be able to join you likely for the whole meeting, but I will be there for uh, a majority of it. And just wanted to take uh, a quick moment if I could. I know that I won't be able to join the festivities after the meeting for Mr. Barney, and I wanted to share with uh, him and my colleagues that, uh, Denny, it's, it's been wonderful to have you uh, as a colleague and really more as a brother uh, in representing uh, District 1 and 2, I think, together. Uh, and you will be sorely missed, and I'm very sincerely sorry I can't be there today, but uh, I know you'll do great things and you'll still be with us in spirit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, uh, Supervisor Chukri, and we really do appreciate you joining, and, and thank you. Thank you for those words. Um, at this time, we're, we're going to need to take an item out of order. So we're now going to consider item 53, um, which is on uh, page 26 of the agenda. And uh, this item does require a unanimous roll call vote. Um, so at this time, it would be open for any discussion or a motion on item 53, which is Arizona Public Service Grant of Utility Easement. Mr. Chairman, motion that we uh, approve uh, item 53 is published in the agenda. All right. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. We have a motion and a second. All. In, oh, I'm sorry. This is a roll call. So, Madam Clerk, if you could please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Barney. Aye. Supervisor Chukri. Aye. Supervisor Hickman. Aye. Supervisor Gallardo. Aye. Chairman Gates. Aye. All right, the uh, motion passes unanimously. And now we will move to the regular agenda, PZ1, which is Acoma Estates. And uh, if we could call on uh, at this point, uh, uh, well, let me, let, me go, let me go over the ground rules here just a little bit briefly. Uh, we've spoken with both sides uh, on this item, both the applicant and the neighborhood. And uh, both sides will receive 10 minutes uh, to put on their presentation. They can do that however they wish, uh, but each side will be will receive 10 minutes, and we will when we get to that portion, we will have the clock set with 10 minutes. So there's no question; everyone is receiving the the same amount of time uh, on both sides. And uh, but before that, uh, if it's if it's all right with uh, Supervisor Hickman, uh, if we go ahead and have a have a staff presentation from. From Darren? Uh, absolutely, I would appreciate it. Thank okay, you, Darren. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Darren. Mr. Chairman, uh, Supervisors, good morning. Uh, this sole PNZ item is C2018010. Is here, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Known as Acoma Estates. This was continued from uh, January 16th. It's in District 4. It's a 15 acre zone change from Rule 43 to R110 RUPD on the north side of Acoma. Uh, east of 75th Avenue in the Peoria area. The commission recommendation was unanimous for approval subject conditions A through K. Uh, there has been a project modification, uh, so there are suggested STIP revisions that uh, we can go over uh, at the end of the presentation, should you like. Uh, the modified proposal 
is for uh, R110, our EPD zoning, uh, but with an 80-foot minimum lot width and 11,600 square foot minimum lot area, the average lot area per dwelling unit is 17,000 square feet. Uh, before you is the concept plan. It's for 28 single family lots with an internal neighborhood park, as well as a 20 foot deep landscape track along Acoma Drive. Uh, neighborhood opposition has suggested a compromise at R118 zoning. Uh, straight R118 zoning would result essentially in 27 lots without a park. Uh, as of yesterday, the level of opposition has triggered a supermajority or four affirmative votes for approval of the R110 REPD zoning. Uh, there are a total of 40 neighborhood uh, parcels that have registered opposition. Uh, eight of those and, uh, uh, and eight in support. Uh, within a 300 foot radius, there's 17 opposed and eight in support. Uh, that opposition within the, the radius tr uh, is 41% by acreage and 40% by number. The trigger for supermajority is 20% in both those categories. Um, I should point out that as overnight, eight additional uh, uh, letters of opposition were received. Two of those appear to be new opposition and not duplicates. That does not change the fact there's a supermajority vote required. So all of the unincorporated territory within this uh, region uh, bounded on the uh, north by just above Greenway, on the south by Thunderbird, on the east by 67th Avenue, and on the west by 83rd. All the unincorporated zoning is Rule 43. There are two SUPs. Um, there is a, uh, this, this is a three-quarter square mile county island. It's approximately two miles long, again, stretching along uh, Acoma between 67th and 83rd. It's characterized by single-family homes on uh, acre-plus lots. Uh, the subject site is the last large county uh, tract of undeveloped land within this uh, county island. Arguably, uh, concern from some of the uh, neighborhood opposition is that this uh, development of a subdivision with lots less than an acre uh, would split the large lot neighborhood into two separate islands. Uh, also, arguably, for, uh, uh, the multi-lane 75th Avenue arterial already does that to some degree. Uh, the last county rezoning in this island uh, was at the northwest corner of 71st and Thunderbird. It was known as 71 Oaks. That was also for R110 RUPD. Uh, that was approved uh, May of 2017. Subsequently, it was annexed in the city of Peoria January 2018. Uh, surrounding city of Peoria zoning, uh, real quickly, to the north, uh, includes Paradise West Estates immediately to the north at R118, Terracita at R112, uh, Tierra Norte at R110, Arrow, Arrowhead Shadows at R18, and Palo Verde Estates at R18. To the south, you have uh, the, uh, uh, the, the case I just mentioned, the 71 Oaks at R110. You have Redfield Estates at R118, Arrowhead Shadows at R110, Thunderbird Vista at R18, Shavano at RM1, Copperfield at R18, Tremonto Bello at R18, West Valley Ranch at R18. And then you have a very large uh, uh, subdivision known as Redfield, uh, I'm sorry, Longhorn Ranch, which is R135. Those are three quarter acre lots. Um, access uh, from a com sorry here. Access uh, to from Acoma States is going to uh, be directly onto Acoma Drive, which is a collector route that connects the arterial 67th Avenue, 75th Avenue, and 83rd Avenue. There will not be any access onto neighborhood local streets. Um, there is a, a Peoria general plan land use element policy that has been uh, uh, discussed and has raised some concern. Um, that policy is high density residential development should have direct access onto arterial streets. It's a good policy. The proposed R110 uh, zoning with a minimum 11,600 square foot lots is not high density. Uh, such zoning would be low to moderate density. The actual gross density for the land use plan calculation of 1.9 million per acre is clearly low density. Uh, to plan, to date, there's been no comments received from the city of Peoria other than from city engineering. Uh, the rec recommendation for uh, rezoning approval includes the condition uh, that there be an executed pre-annexation agreement prior to final plat approval. Uh, the conceptual subdivision will only be developed in the city. 
the city will provide water, sewer, police, and fire protection to the subdivision. Uh, the county's Rural 43 Zoning District Purpose Statement uh, does state, it, it is for preserving open spaces and agrarian type uses, but it does state when governmental facilities and services, public utilities, and street access are available, applications for change of this zoning district to any single family residential zoning district will be given favorable consideration. Um, that is the case. It is furthering uh, plan policies. The commission therefore unanimously recommended approval of the Armenton REPD zoning subject to conditions A through K. Uh, based upon uh, the project modification, uh, staff has provided suggested conditions A through K uh, that are revised from the commission recommendation to reflect uh, the changes being considered. Uh, chiefly of those uh, is limiting uh, the entire uh, development to single family homes and the 20 foot landscape track along a coma. Um, I am happy to answer any questions. That concludes my presentation at this time. Thank you, Mr. Jurd. Any questions from my colleagues? I, I just, you guys will be standing by after uh, public commentary, correct? Yes. Okay, for any questions, okay? Perfect, all right, well, uh, unless there are any other questions then, um, Madam Clerk, I know we have a number of uh, speaker slips on this, perhaps if you could read all those into the record and then we'll go ahead and, and go with the 10 minutes for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have two groups and they are all in opposition. The first group uh, will speak if necessary, if they are asked questions. The other group just want to register that they are in opposition. The, in the first group, Angela Horst, Earl Moses, Jeremiah um, Leakey, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing these properly, Kimberly Leakey, uh, Robert Warango, Ann Nichols, Stephen Nichols, Carol Qualman, Edward Severson, Roger Swally, Swale, no, Swag, Swagel, uh, Randy Franzmeyer. And in the other group, uh, these are just re registering opposition but do not wish to speak. Stacy Oliver, Jason Schwade, Bradley Birchfield, Chris Ticiera, Jennifer Cassern, Andrea Weg Wager, I apologize, Weniger, uh, Everett Lucas Jr., Tamara Hatfield, Tom Leach, Susan Leach, Donald Richardson, and Susie Richardson, Judy, I apologize, Judy Richardson. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. So with that, then I will turn the mic over to Mr. Baugh on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Chairman, may, may I ask, uh, to be respectful of the 10 minute time, perhaps I could just have eight minutes on the front side, then opportunity for two minutes rebuttal on the back side. And I need a shot clock, the 24 second countdown. So if the clock would reflect eight minutes better than the 10, I think I could be more efficient with my time, if that'd be okay. I, I think as long as we can do that, uh, there we go. We just did it. Thank you. And Darren, do you have a clicker by chance? Okay. Well, I, I appreciate your time and consideration. This is a case that I've worked on or been working on for, for more than a year at this point. I spent time in the living rooms of, of Kim and her husband. They've been generous in helping us coordinate meetings with the folks. I've walked the backyards of Sabrina. I've been in her living room. I've, sat in the front yards with um, Craig and Brittany. And these are folks that I've been very pleasant to work with. And while there's a degree of opposition, they, I found to be very friendly and nice people. And I think that we've come to some agreement on some things, but I can't say I've been able to convince everybody. But what I hope to show you today is why this makes good land planning sense. This is a classic case of an infill parcel. Infill parcels are parcels that have been skipped over. They're vacant land and developments passed it and moved on. And usually it's things like topography or gradient drainage or access issues 
or sometimes neighbors that prevent infill parcels from moving forward until someone's willing to kind of tackle those issues and move forward. And that's the case before you today. It's about 14 acres or so. And in your county plan, you, you tend to adopt area specific plans like the white tanks area plan. And plans that are in those specific areas tend to follow that. But in the absence of those area plans, you tend to look at what does the local city jurisdiction recommend. In this case, while it's a county island, it's within the planning area of the city of Peoria. And, this, and even this is your policy document, you tend to defer to those jurisdictions, recognizing that in most cases they annex into that area. And here, you give great deference to those uh, municipal plans. And in this case, this is the general plan map for Peoria. It recommends residential estate, which is one to two homes per acre. Our overall density is 1.9. It's entirely consistent with the Peoria general plan. Uh, the second thing that you look at in developing infill parcels is what is the zoning pattern in the area and what's the development pattern? I recognize we are in an area where there are a number of county island homes that have been there for some time. But every vacant parcel of some substantial size as it's come in has come in with a much smaller subdivision and then annexed into Peoria. And that's why you see, I recognize there is a couple of R1A to R135. That's the exception, but the norm and by and large, the majority are R18, R110, and even some R16 and some multifamily RM1. And that's highlighted in those maps that you see there. Uh, ironically, even the corner diagonal to the southwest, it's green on that map, is pending zoning case in Peoria for R18. It's literally across the street. So this is the pattern for infill parcels as they move forth to development. They come in with a density because you have to have infrastructure to support this. To cover those infrastructure costs, you need density that is commensurate with it. The second thing you look at is recent zoning cases that have been in that area, sort of as an example of what you can expect and what the, the county can support. In this case, in 2017, the county approved a project very similar to ours. It's very close but nearby, about a quarter mile or less. It's an R110 subdivision. And I want to point out, while it's a smaller parcel than us, they had more homes and greater density. And more importantly, they had the same type of zoning on the, around them. They had an R43 and R118. So this isn't necessarily incompatible with the pattern that's been established. Here was their plan, and I want to put on this plan that their access wasn't to Thunderbird at all, but it was to the Collector Street. There is no requirement that these developments connect to a Collector Street. Here's the project at the Kitty Corner. I just briefly mentioned it's in the pending case right now. It's zone R18. It's far more dense. It's 8,000 square foot lots. Uh, comparative purposes were much more appropriate for that area. So here's our land plan. There's a couple of things I want to point out here. It may be hard to see on here, but there are irrigation ditches on all four sides, and we needed to recognize that. And in many cases, there's easements. So while it might not be apparent, there's a landscape buffer on all four sides of our property. That buffer is to allow continued irrigation delivery that's in this area. One thing I learned pretty quick from my first meeting is don't mess with water in this area. That's where people die. And so as a result, we made sure that we maintain that irrigation delivery and will not disrupt it. Quite honestly, it's, it hasn't been well maintained, and so we know we have an obligation probably to retile or re, uh, entirely redo that irrigation ditch, but in no way will we disrupt the service that's there. The second thing we've done is we've made sure that we pulled our lots off of a coma. If we were to develop in Peoria, the standard is an eight-foot landscape setback. At this point, through this year process, through the negotiation of the neighbors and the most recent agreements, we're at a 20-foot landscape setback that's in addition to the 15 feet of landscaping in the right of way. So you'll have a 35 foot landscape setback along a coma. We have a central park as part of this development discussion. We've even agreed to rural lighting standards, which is essentially no lighting in the subdivision except for at the intersection. <clears throat> this project is very low density, 1.9 homes per acre. We understand that there's a sentiment of an agrarian fill in this area. And so we try to design the streetscape so it represents that area. So while you see a block wall is expected with a subdivision, we wanted to put in that split rail fencing along the streetscape with a pedestrian way. And even at one point, it was suggested to the neighbors to do a bridal path or a multi-use trail. And so that will run in there as well. We try to heavily landscape it. So we'll have double rows of trees, as you see in that exhibit, with more mature tree plantings and more shrubs per tree than would normally be expected. So this is hard to read, but the reason why I put this on here, we've probably had more than two dozen different meetings, phone calls, emails, and cooperation through this process. It dates all the way back from February of last year to most recently just this week. That includes the meetings I mentioned in their backyards and walking the ditches and in their living rooms and in their front yards and, and at the city and all other kinds of places. And it isn't without an effort that I'm trying to find solutions here. I recognize it wasn't a popular thing to do. I think this area is special. It is unique. 
that's been communicated to me how they fended off previous attempts for annexation. I, I've tried to be sensitive to that, recognizing that on 28 homes at 1.9 homes per acre, it's hard to make it pencil with the infrastructure you have to put in place. So to the extent we could do things like lower building heights, increase rear yard setbacks, increase side yard setbacks, um, improve the streetscape, improve the planting intensities, improve the irrigation, those are all things that we've been tr trying to find ways to do. And I can't say that I've been able to get in touch with everybody. But I've been willing to meet with anybody. And in some cases, um, we've had some, several meetings. Sometimes it's only been one or two people that meet with me. And I think it's representative of the number of people who have signed the support in spite of the opposition that's been out there. There's a couple of things I want to point out. So why would you oppose this case? Well, maybe it's too dense. But as I point out, 1.9 homes is considered low density. And it's highly consistent with that area pattern in the general plan. So maybe you'd say, well, there's too much traffic. That's another concern I've heard. We did a traffic um, impact statement. It creates in the peak hour, which is a two-hour window in the morning and a two-hour window in the evening, 21 trips peak. That's both in and out combined, and 28 in the evening. That was in March of last year, long before this opposition occurred, and compared it, because this used to be a school-owned property. And whether that's a bus barn or a school facility or something else, from comparative purposes, this is far, far less trips than you would have if the school facility had been built here. Perhaps there's a concern that we're going to remove irrigation, but I think we've resolved that by meeting with and understanding the irrigation layout and being able to preserve that condition. So another thought what I heard was, well, Acoma Road can't handle with this type of traffic. But Acoma Road, while it's not designed as a collector, is intended to be a collector. And as a result, while it may only go from 67 to 83rd, it's a reliever between people who can't take Greenway or who want to avoid Thunderbird. It's a necessity that's in that area, and that's why the function it serves. That's the type of road that's intended to serve volumes far greater than 28 lots. Um, perhaps the streetscape was a concern, and so we've tried to address that with greater number of plants and shrubs and a more mature plant and shrub. We've even been willing to do a split rail fence along the perimeter fence. Boy, well, that was fast. <laughs> At the end of the day, we've agreed to a couple of conditions with the neighbors, and I can't say it's satisfied everybody, but it's a step in the right direction. And At the end of the day, staff supports it, planning commission supports it, consistent with the general plan, consistent with the development plan in that area, and I'm thankful I reserved two minutes on the back side, and I'll, I'll catch up what I missed on this front side. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Appreciate that. Um, so now uh, for the, the neighborhood, we have two speakers. Again, 10 minutes, however you choose to do that. So uh, Scott Oliver, you'll be starting. Yes, absolutely. We will do that. That's a great question. We will, we will, so when you stop speaking, if we can just stop the uh, clock and we, we won't charge you the time. Yes, and Tim Lasote is, is the other speaker. Second to figure this guy out. You may. Not familiar, please. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Board of Supervisors. Um, thank you for your time today. I have a big presentation. Didn't know it was ten minutes, so I'm probably going to run through pretty fast here. Um, as you can see here, this area is called Weedville. It was founded in 1911. It's very historic. They're one of the first people here to to settle in this area. This here's a map you can see in the yellow is a county island. What I'm going to show you here is uh, this area has changed a lot, but the county island has stayed the same through the years. Most of the new developments that come in have come in at that R135 or 18. You'll see here, this is the, this is the neighborhood back in 1949. Again, I'm going to fly through these 86, 96, and even today. But the thing to notice there is that the county island has stayed the same throughout all those years for, I mean, over 50 years. It was in 1949. You can see there were some houses in Weedville there. So right here is the city of Peoria zoning map. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these developments that Adam was talking about, the new developments that come in, I, I hope you have noticed that they exit onto a main street. And even if they're not right on the Thunderbird or 75th, they go right past their own development to get to them, just, I mean, a short distance. They don't go through a neighborhood. Our area is really unique. Uh, the land was originally given to or sold to the, the school district. It was for farming. It was for the FFA program into farming. Uh, they're going to tell you that it's a bus depot and we're better off to have this traffic than a bus trap. But it was it was farming. It was farmed for years. It's still been farmed just to a couple years ago. 
Uh, we have generations of families. The, the family across the street, the Christensen family, has been there for five generations. Their family has moved back. There's a ton of history in this neighborhood. And then other people like myself have specifically seeked out this neighborhood for this rural lifestyle. We love it. I mean, I'm going to hopefully live there the rest of my life. Uh, we've fought annexation for years, as Adam said. Uh, we're strictly against annexation. We love being part of the county. Um, it's a unique area. We have, you go there anytime, you can find horses, cows, chickens, llamas, whatever. There's many times I go on a run and I have to go around horses, right? I'm, I grew up on a farm back in South Dakota, and it reminds me of that when I go out for a run. I feel like I'm, I'm only a couple miles from the mall, but I still feel like I'm back home. It's just such a unique area. This subdivision differs greatly from a lot of the ones Adam has talked to. This subdivision, when you look at it, it's a, it's a U-shape. There's, there's Rural 43 on all, I don't know if I have it in the slide, but there's, on all three sides of it, it's RU 43. It doesn't back up to a main street. It's not to another R110 development. It's slammed right in the middle on three sides by RU 43 and R118 on the other side. And there's no ingress or egress to a main street or even close. They have to come through our development to get to either 75th Avenue or Thunderbird. They're jumping, I think I got it later, but I would think that, I don't know, but I would think that the use of R40 or 35s and 18s, that that's the transition to go in an area like ours. We get that. Oh, I actually think that's on the next slide, so. Um, R110, it doesn't, it doesn't fit the use of our neighborhood. You know, the horses, cows, chickens are rural. I, I think there can be a transition, but right now it doesn't fit. With those developments, I know crime's just a part of thing, but I think it's something we should touch on. You can see, oh shoot, sorry. Um, you can see here the bottom is, is the, you can see the s city developments, all the crime, and then the top one you can see the county. I mean, it's kind of funny how you can see exactly where the county is on that map, because there's no crime in our county. With those, within our county island, with those developments comes crime. There's just no two ways about it. We recognize that the, that the developer, that they own land, and, and you know, something has to be done with it. We don't want it to just sit there just like they don't. But they also knew when they, when they acquired it that it was RU-43. And I would hope that they would have had provisions for it as RU-43. And they're taking a, a gamble that they can put this into the most amount of lots they can to maximize profit. I, I think there's a lot of steps, and that's what I'm going to get to a lot of this. I think there's a lot of steps between RU-43 and R-10. But R-10 is just the most profitable. We can put the most houses in there, make the most money. But I think we'd be making a big mistake to, to shoot right through all the other, the other uh, designations to get to that. And I don't know if one person's rights are better than another's, but I would think the, the generational ownership, the people who have lived here decade after decade and their grandparents and grandparents should, I would hope, have a little bit more pull than trying to maximize profit by slamming as many lots as they can in there. Um, there, there is no formal plan for this development with the city of Peoria. Any, any uh, guess at, at that city's going to annex it is just a, it's that. It's, there is no formal plan with them right now. And as he stated, there, this is the city's plan. And they do have the residential low use designation. I know we keep Adam really pointed out in time and time again that it's 1.9 homes per acre. I'm not an expert, but at R110, that's 10,000 square foot lots. I know we can throw in streets and landscape and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, my house is, is um, two and a half acres, but RU43 is one house per four, 43,000 square feet. Now we're asking to go to one house per 10,000 square feet. That's 3.6 homes to 4.3 homes per acre. So it's just such a huge jump from where it is currently. And just and, wanted to note you're down to about four minutes in case okay. for Mr. Lasota. Yeah, <laughs> it's 20 minutes. I'm pretty proud of how far I've got. Um, uh, I mean, he's, he said that it's a collector street. This street ends on 67th and 83rd. There's, there's a canal on one side and a freeway on the other. It's not a collector street. It was just paved recently. It's been gravel up until just a few years ago, and now there's speed bumps. It's not a collector street. It wasn't meant to be, even if it technically it was called that. Um, right here, I mean, again, this is just the plan. You can see here that uh, I guess the big thing here is to see that all the, the other developments that he's talking about go on to the main road. 
So in summation, the, this change is not consistent with your guys' plan for, you know, it's a rural 43. I think the reason our 35s and 18s were, are there is to make that transition from 43 to a 10 or 8. Uh, it's not consistent. Oh, I didn't even get to that. PR, City of Peoria has a historical plan in place, and they specifically call out Weedville. You can see right here, policy 1.1. It's Thunderbird, north of, seven, north of Thunderbird, between 71st and 75th. They've designated that area. It's been there since 1911. It's an awesome area. You can still find, there's still a guy there who's fixing up the old farm equipment. The cemetery's still there. There's a lot of history there, and Peoria has recognized that. So even if this goes through, they're banking on that annexation, and I'm not, I'm not sure that it's going to go through, because like I said, it is a historical district. Um, so it, it doesn't fit with their historical map. It doesn't fit with their general plan with a low density. Uh, it's not consistent with the zoning adjacent to it. It's all RU43. Uh, we're not unreasonable. I think R35, I think R18, I think we'd be a little more open to. But I think taking the jump from 43 down to, down to 10 is just too much of a leap, and I don't think you guys should pay off their gamble. That's it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lasota. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Board of Supervisors. And first, I'd like to ask everyone in the audience who's here in opposition to this case, if you could raise their, your hands, I'd appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Supervisors, you can see a lot of people took time out of their day to come here and oppose this, this project. It's very important to them. Uh, they're here, obviously, in numbers. And I wanted to capture or talk in the brief time that I have about the, there's been a lot of talk about the, the comprehensive plan and to hear the applicant talk about it, uh, basically whatever Peoria says is what this county uh, needs to follow. If you read the Maricopa County comprehensive plan, it says Maricopa County will refer to municipal plans as guides when making decisions involving county islands. However, until land is actually annexed, Maricopa County has planning authority for such areas. That's page 14 of your comprehensive plan. Uh, it's noted in the staff report, page five, this new zoning does not meet the comprehensive plan. I, I was given some explanation as to why there isn't an actual comprehensive plan change, but I think your policy requires it. Uh, your policy states that, that basically this would be a minor amendment, but it would be an amendment nonetheless. Um, the comprehensive plan states that unincorporated areas outside of county area plans are designated rural development area and are only appropriate for rural land uses and rural zoning. Okay, I understand we refer to City of Peoria and we look at what they do, but certainly the Maricopa County's comprehensive plan ought to have some impact on our decision making. I think people uh, make their buying decisions, their moving decisions, all kinds of decisions based on the, your comprehensive plan and, and now the applicant wants you to basically throw it out the window because they might be annexed by Peoria someday. Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. That's a decision uh, in the future we don't know. I don't think this body can assume it. And I would say the Arizona courts have a phrase for, for an applicant like this, and it is a gambling buyer. So they do not have an entitlement to an up zone. We'd ask that you say no to this project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lasota, and thanks to, to everyone who spoke. And uh, we understand we, we had uh, time limitations, but I thought you all did a great job of, of making your, your arguments in, in that time. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Supervisor Hickman. Mr. Yeah, two go minutes. ahead. May I have the two minutes? Oh, oh my, that's okay. my apologies. I'm so sorry. Mr. Baugh, two minutes left on the clock. Do you mind going to last, my last presentation by chance? <laughs> I think there was an, an idea that somehow this is inc incompatible, and I recognize that the county um, homes that are around us, but I want to point out a couple of things. Boy, this doesn't show up on there. Everywhere you see an R110 or an R18 or an RM1, at one point it was next to RU43, and in many cases it still is next to RU43. So that is the pattern that's in, the, in this area. As vacant land comes in, it develops next to RU43 at a density that's more appropriate for the uh, planning subdivisions that have come in the case. I also want to point out here that 
Even the case that was approved by this Board of Supervisors last month was next to land zoned RU43 and RN18, which is the exact same pattern that's right next to our property today. A lot of these projects in the area, Tierra Norte, exit on 79th Avenue, Thunder Road Vista on 79th Avenue, Copperfield, Paso, Paseo Verde on Tierra Buena, Cortland Communities on 71st, and the list goes on and on and on. These plant subdivisions, sometimes in the heart of what used to be considered and still is RU43, yet they find a way to work. This zoning is, 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 is compatible in many ways with that pattern that's in that area. But let's talk about why we can't do an R135 or an R18. Many of those subdivisions that are in that area that are zoned that were long before the codes and ordinances that are in place today. Today, you've got to provide grading and drainage, which those R135 and R43 don't provide. You have to have curb, gutter, sidewalk, street, lighting, parks, minimum open space areas. Those are things that are relatively uh, new standards as applied to these compared to the county homes that were built in the 50s. You can't expect property owners to, to absorb that cost and still sell at a fair market price. At some point, this is a class, classic infill development. It is consistent with the general plan, and I appreciate the effort from the, those that were willing to work together. As a result, we have all single-story homes. We've doubled the size of our setbacks on the sides. We've increased our rear yard setback. We've increased the street skate setback. We've even agreed to no lighting. So these are some significant things that were as a result of that neighborhood outreach process. Even though I haven't been able to convince everybody, there have been people, including those directly west, directly north, and directly south, who have signed letters in support. Thank you, Mr. Baugh. With that, I'll turn it over to Supervisor Hickman. Well, first of all, thank you for all, all, all of you for showing up today. Um, I was not aware, you know, there was a slight change. Sometimes when cases like this occur, everybody, everybody gets two minutes to speak that want to speak. And um, I am fine with going this way with 10 minutes and then 10 minutes, and I, and I hope that you are too. I have a question, though, for Mr. Lasota, if he could come back up. Mr. Lasota, you're, you're acting as a paid spokesperson for, okay, I just wanted to see who uh, you are representing. I mean, is it the entire group? Are you, are you being paid to, uh, to represent certain individuals here? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Hickman, my engagement agreement is with Mr. Uh, Olivier. I think that informally I represent sort of, I've called it the opposition I've met with the neighbors, and uh, obviously there's a monolithic applicant here who's asking you for this zoning change. The opposition is a little bit more fluid, um, so, uh, but I, but if that answers your question. Is Mr. Okay. Olivier here? Okay. Oh, uh, Olivier, I thought it was Mr. Oliver. Okay, sorry. Okay. Another question for you, uh, Mr. Lesoto. Because I've been following this case, and, and I've gotten the chance to talk to some of you verbally, or my, my uh, chief of staff has talked to you also, or via email or vocally. I'm looking directly at Roger Swagel, who's uh, a, a relative by marriage to me, and please don't hit me with any more paintballs if that, if when we go out. I just want to make it clear. He said there was chickens in our neighborhood. There's no chickens in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're not going to be able to visit the farm anymore if you, uh, if you, I have a, my question to you is, why have you not reached out? You've, you're saying, you're talking about in opposition and representing them, but you've never reached out to my office. You never, never once called me. Okay, tell, tell, me, tell me why that is, because some of the residents I've been talking to, I think they thought that maybe you were, but go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Hickman, it's my understanding that Mr. Uh, Olivier reached out to your office, and, and he and I had a specific discussion about who would make which, which contact with which supervisor, and he, he had met you previously, and so it was agreed that, that he would be um, a, a better candidate to make that outreach to you. I also... I know that on uh, in other matters there's been some concern about meeting with attorneys um, and uh, and and there are some meetings in other cases that that I might have been at but there's been some nervousness uh, because another client actually has had some uh, litigation that I'm not handling but against the county so 
Um, in, in other instances, I've been asked not to attend meetings. So uh, those are two reasons why, but we had this specific discussion about who's gonna do the outreach with Supervisor Hickman, it's his district, and it was specifically decided that it would be best just that the client do the outreach directly. Okay, I, I just think it's important. You're talking for a lot of, lot of people, so I just wanted to make sure that it was maybe specifically for one resident. So, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Baugh tried to uh, talk to you because you did represent to him that you were representing uh, the residents. And I have a, I have a letter um, that he sent you and on November 27th wanted to talk about issues. And, and the applicant said that you never reached back or have not been helpful in, in bringing concerns. Is that, is that true? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Hickman, uh, I would not call that true. I met with Mr. Baugh, and after we met with Mr. Baugh and got his letter, I had a discussion with the residents, and they decided that what was being offered wasn't significant enough to change their their opposition. Now, I know these cases, it's always, you know, one side always says the other one's being unreasonable. I think we were willing to sit down. You heard the staff report that said we'd suggested R1-18 as a, as a compromise. Uh, that wasn't accepted, I guess. I, I don't, it, it's, I mean, you can say that they did all the outreach, but in our minds, uh, we had a good compromise for, for how, to, how to allow them to change the zoning, and they, they didn't want that compromise. So, okay. and I, I think that even though, I mean, Mr. Olivier is the person that I've, I've conversed with, but, um, you know, I do think he does speak for the community. We don't have a formal homeowners association. We don't have a formal group. But I think when Mr. Uh, Olivier met with you, I think he did so on behalf of a number of people who have, he's sort of taken a leadership role in this, uh, this effort. Okay. Now I'll ask, thank you. Now I'll ask if, if Adam could come back up. You know, thank you. Growing up in Peoria uh, for all of my life, uh, just about, and growing up on a farm um, and having friends in that neighborhood, and af after listening or after having a conversation with Angela, I don't know, a Angela, are you here? Great. I felt that horses were important and, and being able to continue to access uh, areas uh, to ride those horses. And you brought up the, the, the part that was interesting to me about a bridle path yeah. and making sure that you were having enough setbacks in order to establish a bridle path. And I, I'm hoping that appeals to some of our horse owners in these properties to still have some place to get to to ride, of which I don't know anymore. The city of Peoria has absolutely, totally swallowed up uh, this flat land, this once pristine agricultural land. Um, so that is the tough part about things like this, infill projects and how the, these types of things grow. So I had heard that you were, does that mean that you would put in a bridle path or yes. would you be stipulating towards, towards that? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Supervisor Hickman, that was an idea that was requested by neighbors in our first meeting. We found a way to accommodate that, and that would be in addition to the sidewalk. So you'd have the five-foot sidewalk plus the eight to ten-foot bridle path and a landscape setback. We actually drafted it as a stipulation that we provided to Mr. Lasota back in November as one of the eight other stipulations that we would consider if they would entertain it. That was the response that we'd never heard back from. But if that's still an interest to this, we would be happy to pursue it and install it at our cost. Well, I'd hope that you would talk to the residents about that because I, I think that would be important to them, um, possibly after the fact. And I, I would like to see that occur. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So I, I want to tell the residents out, out there, um, you've not had to attend these meetings in the last six years that I've had this job. And coming off a farm, and moving that farm three times in just my lifetime, from Glendale to Peoria, or outskirts of Peoria, then out to Arlington, then out to Tonopah. Change is extremely tough, and I, and I know, looking at that, I, re, I remember 
uh, FFA land and the kids that were, were doing that. I went to school with them. Um, I'd driven all up and down through that area. That, this, was the, this was the buffer zone between Cactus High School kids and Peoria High School kids. So some of them went one way and some of them went the other. The Christensen family, I, I believe I went uh, to school with one of the daughters. So I'm very familiar with the area. And change is extremely tough. I mean, it's happening all over District 4. It's happening in a lot of our districts. But what I'm noticing, but that I'm not noticing here, you guys might feel that this is, this is high density. Um, it is high density compared to what you were able to live on and live uh, with your children and entice your children back. Um, that irrigated land issue, now that I know that that's being addressed, because I do not want to run counter with people irrigating their, their farms or their, or their land, their yards, uh, their arenas, wh whatever you guys might have out there. But again, change is, change is hard, growth is hard. What I'm seeing, um, not necessarily in this community, but an applicant could absolutely come in here and ask for even higher densities. And that's what I'm seeing all over this county. There are, there are subdivisions that continue to rise up to us that are now going to 45 foot lots. And I do believe that that's an issue. I'm, we're having, I believe, a current issue and gonna continue to have an issue about law enforcement and more residents coming out there. And I, I hear it and I feel it and we budget uh, for, the, for the Sheriff's Department. So, all of your concerns that you have reached out with me, I, I do understand. Roger and I had a pretty decent sized conversation uh, about what is going on out there. But I am a property rights advocate and these, this person or whoever this entity is that purchased the property uh, from the Peoria High School or whatever, wants to do something with that property and it's up to me of what does that need to look like? And what that needs to look like is what's occurring here. I'm, he I'm hearing you. And it's difficult. It's, it's the, I think, looking at my uh, developer friend over here and my attorney friend, it's, it's the toughest part of this job is how we look a little bit down the future and what these communities are going to look like. You have the awesome privilege to be surrounded by the city of Peoria as they continue uh, to grow. In, in, in ways. I absolutely, I have never voted for annexation. I am a child of county, county islands after cities have, have stripped, uh, stripped annex us. I, I understand that too. But I do have to go with my gut on property rights and what your rights are and what you expect and what the property owner and their rights are this, we live in a capitalistic society. We, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of people that want to buy farmland and turn them into parks for the communities that currently surround it. What they, what they want to do is turn them into houses. What I'm trying to make sure is these are not places that turn into really, really small houses or, or apartments because that you do have a rural feel. I still feel with this that you will still have a rural feel. Um, so did the commission before us at, at PNZ. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. I see Adam, how many times he met. And you know, what's funny is you go out there and you make yourself known and it seems to gather more and more opposition at times, just because why you're willing to be out there and you're willing to try to work with a community. Um, so I feel in some ways uh, for Adam, but I also understand that's his job and he's representing a landowner that would like to do something different with that land. So Mr. Mr. Chairman, I've, I've heard it. And I think there's been, I think that there's been necessary changes made um, with this. Again, never a good thing to change a landscape of a community, especially one that's been then there since the twenties. Um, but I would, at this point, make a motion to approve item Z2018010 with the steps 
uh, according. Thank you, yeah. uh, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Gallardo, for the second. Um, any other uh, comments or questions from my colleagues on this case? Um, I would just uh, echo Supervisor Hickman's comments. I think, as everybody knows here, Maricopa County has been the uh, fastest growing county in the country for the past couple of years. And so these issues of, of growth and change are going on around the county. It's not just uh, not just District 4. And, uh, and again, I want to thank everyone who took the time to come here uh, and also thank everyone who spoke. I thought everyone did an excellent job of advocating for their position. And, and thanks for coming here and, and being a part of, of democracy today. So with that, Unless we have any uh, further comments, uh, we do have a motion that's been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right, so we have five, we have five ayes on that. I heard uh, Supervisor Chukri as well on the phone. And uh, so with that, the, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you again to everyone who's, who's come and, and spoken and attended today. Thank you for your deliberation. Thank you. <laughs> You'll get me. <laughs> Give everyone just a moment to, to step out of the auditorium if they so choose. All right, okay, we'll go ahead and uh, move into the remainder of our agenda at this time. Um, uh, we have uh, statutory hearings. We're go going to the liquor license applications. Uh, number uh, five, A and B, special event license for Wisconsin Club of Sun City, the Anthem Rotary Foundation in six, road de-annexation from the city of Buckeye to Maricopa County. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have anyone to speak on these items? All right, well, with that, we will consider items five and six. Motion for approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. All right, thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we'll consider items seven through nine. Uh, seven is uh, appointments for clerk of court, and then we go to county attorney with eight official appointments and oaths of office, and nine is replacement warrants check enforcement program. Uh, we'll now consider item seven through nine. Move for approval, item seven through nine, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Uh, that passes unanimously. Next, uh, to uh, Sheriff, uh, we have 10 and 11 IGAs for sworn officer training for the city of Peoria and the city of Glendale. And then 12 is the agreement with the Arizona Department of Health Services. Uh, the board will now consider items 10 through 12. Move for approval. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Supervisor Hickman, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Now on to number 13, uh, under Treasurer. Um, this is offers on previously offered tax deeded land parcel near 16th Street and Glendale Avenue. Uh, we do have two offers. We have offer number one from Lionel Williams for $900 and offer number two from Anthony Young and Young Properties for $1,000. Do I have a motion for one of those? Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion to accept uh, the highest offer, which looks like it would be offer number two. All right, we have a motion to accept offer two. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Second. 
All right, we'll give that one to Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we have a motion and a second on offer two. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Number uh, 14 is the offer on previously offered tax deeded land parcel for sale to the city of Glendale. Board will now consider item 14. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the only offer we have for item 14. All right, excellent. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion and second on the only offer made on number 14. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously as well. <laughs> All right, now on to county management. Um, number 15 is the uh, non-objection letter for foreign trade zone for Nicola. And number 16 is appointments to the Ryan White Planning Council. Uh, do I have a motion on these items? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items number 15 and 16. Second with a quick comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor uh, Gallardo, for making the motion. Thank you for the second. Supervisor Barney, please. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's good to see Nicola here. I was actually part of the trade mission, if you will, that went up and, and recruited them along with Chris Camacho from GPEC and Chris Harris, who was then the chairman of GPEC. And we were competing with a lot of different markets to get them here. And I think it's exciting that they're here now. Hopefully they can succeed in doing what they're, what they're planning. So uh, I think this is just one step closer to helping them in that regard. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. And again, uh, proving the point that I think it really makes a, a big impact when elected officials will, will uh, take part in these, in these trade missions. So thank you very much for that. Supervisor Barney, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we go on to uh, we've uh, 17 through 20. 17 is revocable license agreement with the city of Scottsdale. Um, and uh, number 18 is a kennel permit. 19 through 20, we've got some donations. Always very grateful for those donations from Love Pup Foundation and the Arizona Companion Animals Spay and Neuter Committee. Uh, do I have a motion uh, for items 17 through 20? Motion to approve items 17 through 20, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That motion passes unanimously. Now we'll consider items 21 through 27. Uh, these are under animal care and control, uh, 21 through 22, again, more donations, uh, Friends of Pima Animal Care Center, and then Two Pups Wellness Fund. Under correctional health, uh, we have uh, donations uh, on these for uh, Alkermes Inc. and Janssen Pharmaceutical Inc. and also Otsuka America Farm Inc. Uh, 26, we've got agreement with Pima Medical Institute, and 27 is a budget adjustment. Do you have a motion uh, on items 21 through 27? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Barney and Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, uh, we're on to items 28 through 31. 28 is an appropriation adjustment under environmental services for facilities management. We have 29, transfer of expenditure authority for East Valley Animal Care and Control Facility. And under finance on 30, we have the annual adjustment to inmate booking and housing fees. And also uh, 31 is funds transfers warrants. Uh, do we have a motion uh, for items 28 through 31? Mr. Chairman, a motion with comment? Yes. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. We have a motion. I'll second. And a second from Supervisor Hickman. Please, Supervisor Barney. Just comment on uh, agenda item number 30. That's always a sensitive issue as we deal with our mm -hmm. municipal partners. Uh, most of the inmates that we have are not inmates that are brought into custody by Maricopa County. It's from federal agencies in the cities and towns that we serve. Uh, the good news is our inmate population is down. The bad news is the fixed costs are generally the same, and so you see that per diem creeping up. And so I think we've worked hard to, to manage that. I know the sheriff is working hard in that regard. And, and I just want to make sure that our, our partners at the cities and towns and others know how sensitive we are to it. And, and we're going to continue to, to find efficiencies. We've, 
We're in the process of spending nearly $200 million on a new ITR facility and, and other infrastructure that we think will make significant uh, impacts on the uh, in-custody costs as well as the time that it takes to process inmates in. And that's something that's been in the works now for a couple of years and it's under construction uh, with that new 512 bed short-term hold facility. So all of those things I think play into the broader smart justice initiative. But I don't want it to be lost on our partners that, that generally pay this fee that uh, we're not uh, super vigilant and sensitive to the fact that those costs are going up. And we hope that we have solutions that are gonna help either stabilize those or, or start to push those back down as we administer that part of our statutory duty in a way that's uh, most cost effective. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Supervisor Barney, for those comments and, and very appropriate that you raise that one because of your leadership on smart justice issues uh, throughout your time here on the Board of Supervisors and also a great example of how uh, you've never been afraid of numbers and getting into the details, which has been such a benefit to us both here at the county, but then also to our partners uh, like our municipalities. So thank you for your leadership on that that issue along with, with so many others. Um, Chairman, yes, Supervisor Hickman. Maybe Danny would want to just stick around a little bit longer so we can get the ITR opened under his watch. <laughs> it is hey, it is well underway, and uh, with with Reed at the helm of managing that, I have great confidence. So I, I'm, I'll be back for the grand opening okay. as well as two two five. So if you'll have me, yeah. excellent. Awesome. We we would love to have you there. All right. Any other comments? If not, we do have a motion and a second on items 28 through 31. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously as well. And next we go to items 32 through 39. 32 is personnel agenda for Maricopa County. 33, personnel agenda for the judicial branch. 34 are some market ranges. 35, under uh, human services, we have the agreement with Gulf Coast Dietetic Internship Program. 36 through 37, amend our agreements with the Arizona Community Action Association. 38 is an agreement with Dignity Health. And 39 is a contract for shelter services. Uh, do we have a motion uh, for items 37 through 39? Move to approve items 32 through 39, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, second. Supervisor Hickman. Thank you, Supervisor Barney, for the second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, 37 through 39 pass unanimously. Next to items 40 through 44, under planning and development, we have the number 40 is appropriation adjustments. Under procurement, uh, we have 41, security building Parking 42 is a McDot ADA modernization services. 43 is Wells Fargo parking. And then 44 is East Valley animal care and control improvements. Uh, do we have a motion on items 40 through 44? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 40 through 44. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Second with a, with a comment. And uh, thank you for that second, uh, Supervisor Hickman, please. Uh, on number 44 on the East Valley Animal Care and Control Improvements, I'm going to take another chance to, to brag on uh, both, both my colleagues, Steve, Steve, but, um, Steve Chukri. It's, I believe it's in his district, but, um, but also on Denny Barney, because this one was a, we were, we were going in a different track. Uh, when it came to animal care and control. And, and uh, we heard from a lot of people about the East Valley. And, you know, the spend on that <clears throat> was getting to be, as you guys know, a little bit more and more uncomfortable uh, for me. But I will t reflect back on, on uh, what Denny told me. Um, he went out to the current shelter on, I believe, a Saturday. And it wasn't even about this issue. It was about what was going on out there, how the animals were being cared for, uh, how the people uh, were, were rising or falling to the occasion based on the facilities there. So, um, Danny, I just, I just want you to know, sometimes, you know, when you're having conversations with us, your, your words, sometimes they're funny, but a lot of times uh, they have a, a great meaning. And in this sector right here and in, in the East Valley, you've been a great representative because you know, again, it's it's spending money, uh, and money is hard to come by here at the county. Uh, 
and we spend it judiciously, but I will just kind of reflect on the words of what, what you saw and what you went through on that Saturday, that Saturday visit. So I, I appreciate it. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor on uh, these items, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next to public health, we have 45, the agreement with the quality health, 46 through 49 amends agreements and contracts with Arizona Department of Health Services and Dignity Health. 50 through 51 are public use data agreements with the City of Tempe Housing Services and the City of Mesa through its Public Housing Authority. And then finally, 52 is purchase orders for IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services. Uh, at this time, the Board will consider items 45 through 52. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a motion. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Second. And a second from Supervisor Hickman. Thank you very much. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously as well. Next, under transportation, we have 54 contract with EPS Group, Inc. With 55, we have Department of the Air Force grant of easement. 56 and 57 are IGAs with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County and the Arizona Department of Transportation. And 58 is easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 54 through 58. Move to approve items 54 through uh, 58 with a comment on number 55, please. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Um, Supervisor Hickman. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on number 55, this, uh, thank you, uh, County, for, for working together. This, this, uh, this street is, is bisected by a big fence keeping people out of Luke Air Force Base. So this one was kind of a kind of a tough one because it is truly in uh, the city of Glendale. So I appreciate uh, the hard work that's gone and it's kind of an intricate situation, but I appreciate it and I want just to make sure that uh, it's known that Maricopa County stands behind the Air Force a little bit more in this topic than the city of Glendale. So they can call me if they'd like to chip in and help a little bit. <laughs> All right. Who, Glendale or the Air Force? <sighs> How about both? I think I think that behind the fence, they can both help out a little bit. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, unless there are any other comments, then the board will consider items of 54 and 58. We do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we, we're going to be... Um, uh, we've got some appointments. Uh, 59 is appointment of Rebecca Friend to the Merit System Commission. And uh, thank you very much to Rebecca for her willingness to serve. And 60 through 64 are reappointments to Board of Adjustment and Drainage Review Board, uh, the Travel Reduction Program Regional Task Force, the Air Pollution Hearing Board, Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission, and the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, do I have a motion on items 59 through 64? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 59 through 64 with just a brief comment towards the end. Perfect. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Second. And thank you, Supervisor Hickman, for the second. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as, as elected officials, we, we often time um, always get to meet some great people out in the community and, and folks that... Uh, we may not have met otherwise, but uh, we uh, were able to offer uh, opportunities for some great folks to step up and, and serve the, 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 the county. And we have one particular gentleman that is here, Andrew Ruscone. I think there he is in the back. Um, I got to meet him maybe two, three years ago. Um, and I think we, were, we may have been Facebook friends, but never had a chance to kind of me, but he, uh, he is part of an organization just down the street, he works for the Southwest Center for HIV and AIDS. Um, he's a project coordinator and he is always on the go. And that's the one thing that caught my eye. He is involved in so many great projects and, and just doing wonderful things and spreading awareness and, and offering uh, a help in terms of healthcare and, and all that great stuff. So when the opening came up on our uh, public health department here uh, committee, uh, offered him, said, hey, 
come to uh, come to the county, be part of the health board, and uh, offer your experience and your guidance and and all that great stuff. So, Andrew, thank you for for all, or for accepting the offer to serve and uh, appreciate it and. Uh, Continue all the great work you're doing out there in the community. You're doing a, a heck of a job. Thank you. And, and of course, uh, my good friend, Rebecca Friend, I've always said there's no such thing as retirement, Rebecca. Uh, come on back. And um, so she's, she's always willing to serve. So I'm glad she's agreed to serve on the Merit System Commission. And, and of course, some old friends that I've known for many years, reappointing Isabel Chavez, uh, Robert Zamora, and Brian Davidson, been longtime friends with all of them. And they've agreed to continue their service. So thank you all. Wonderful. I echo those comments and thank you, uh, Supervisor Gallardo and everyone else for those great appointments. So with that, uh, we do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have the setting of hearings. Uh, Clerk of the Board, uh, 65 is proposed La Celesta Irrigation Water Delivery District Impact Statement and submitted petitions for the formation of the Orchid Park Irrigation Water Delivery District. Had some discussion about irrigation uh, earlier, so great to see those folks stepping up. Uh, under transportation, 67 through 69 are road files. Do I have a motion uh, to uh, pass these uh, particular items? Motion to approve items 65 through 69, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Second. Thank all right, thank you for the second, Supervisor Gallardo. And um, uh, so uh, we, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Okay, so we're moving on now to the consent agenda. Items 70 through 79, which include appointment of Jerry Wright as a deputy clerk. We have the canvas of elections, civil penalty appeals, duplicate and stale uh, dated warrants, Head Start monthly report, tax cases, and other administrative actions. The board will now consider items 70 through 79. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 70 through 79. Thank you very I'll much. Second, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, excuse me? Supervisor Chukri? Yeah, I second it. I don't second. want Gallardo to get all the credit. <laughs> Excellent. We're wondering if you're going to participate Excellent. in this meeting, Mr. Shukri. Thank you so much. And thanks for sticking with us so long. We're, we're really grateful for that. Well, thanks for going through security with me and everything else. It's been quite a ride the past 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hope, hope everything's going well now that we have the uh, shutdown in our, in our rear view mirror, at least for now. Um, all right. So we have a motion uh, for consideration uh, by the board. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes as well. Um, now we're going into some of the addendum items. Um, on the first one, at this point, we're just going to take A1, which is appropriation adjustment on RICO funds. Uh, do we have a motion on item A1? Motion to approve item A1, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a motion. Second. From Supervisor Hickman. Second from Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, all in favor of A1, please say aye. 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 All right, that motion passes unanimously. Now on A2, I'm actually going to step out for a moment and pass it over to my vice chairman, Supervisor Nick. So this is when I get to utilize the gavel? That's right. <laughs> I think we'll wait for our chairman to step off. Okay, on to item A2, I believe. Uh, Friend, is that it? Just the yes. just the only item. Yes. Uh, A two Ford at Al versus Maricopa County. Um, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Item A two. Second, the motion is discussed in e session. <laughs> I have a motion to second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, hearing no. I'm, I'm getting out of habit here. So hearing no nays, we can move on. So we welcome the chairman back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Supervisor Hickman. Appreciate that. 
Um, now, at this point, we will um, handle items A3 through A5. A3 is ADP, LLC Transaction Privilege Tax Refund and Litigation Item. Uh, A4 is uh, for the Sheriff's Office, amending the PetSmart Charities, Inc. grant. And, um, uh, and also Superintendent of Schools, um, A5, which is appoint and set the salary for Matt Morales as our uh, chief deputy of uh, superintendent of schools. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Morales, for joining us. And as well, uh, Steve Watson, our superintendent of schools, thanks so much to both of you for being here. And thanks for all that you do for the students and teachers uh, and the parents in Maricopa County. So we really appreciate uh, you both being here. Uh, so with that, I would entertain a motion on items A through A3 through A5. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank second. you, Supervisor Barney. Second. And thank you for that second, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor uh, of these items, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Motion passes, and thanks again for being here. Um, we're now moving on uh, to uh, additional items in the addendum. Uh, A6, uh, and which is settlement in April Copeland et al. versus the City of Phoenix in Maricopa County. And A8, which is uh, appointing Andrew Jacob Rescone uh, to the Board of Health. Uh, would entertain a motion on items A6 through A8. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move uh, approval and a, and a quick, uh, I guess, correction, but um, I'll make a motion to approve item A, A6 and A8. Excellent. Second, second, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you very much. Supervisor <laughs> Mr. Guyardo. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, here's my, uh, here's my public uh, embarrassment. I, well, it's not so much an embarrassment. Andrew, thank you once again. I, I had a number of appointees coming up on, on this agenda, so uh, kind of looped them all into all the other appointees. But anyways, Andrew, once again, this is our second time around. This is a reaffirming <laughs> uh, we want you on this Board of Health, so thank you for serving. So. Excellent. Andrew's not too late to back out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Supervisor Gallardo. Appreciate that. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of uh, A6 through A8, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, perfect. Now on A7, I think if uh, I think the vice chairman will be yeah, stepping out. Yeah, I'm be stepping correct? out on, on this item. Thank okay, you very perfect. Much. Thank you. So we'll give him a moment to step out of the auditorium. Mr. Chairman, as he leaves the auditorium, I'd be prepared to, to make a, a motion that we approve uh, the uh, settlement agreement that was discussed in e-session and, uh, and move forward is outlined in the agenda today. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Supervisor Barney. We uh, have that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Um, all in favor of A7, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That uh, motion passes as well. So now we can have Supervisor Hickman rejoin us. And now we're going to recess as the Board of Supervisors, and we will convene as the Improvement district board of directors, and we'll consider items I-1 and I-2. These are resolutions to dissolve the Queen Creek Domestic Water Improvement District and the Plymouth Street Improvement District. The board will now consider these items. Move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Uh, do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor of items I-1 and I-2, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, uh, we will adjourn as the Improvement District Board of Directors and convene as the Flood Control uh, District Board of Directors and consider items F1 through F4. F1, amend IGA with the Town of Gilbert. F2 is uh, IGA with McDot. F3 is contract with MD Merit, Inc. And F4 is the personnel agenda. Uh, would entertain a motion on these items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. Uh, do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? 
That motion passes unanimously as well. Now uh, we'll in, uh, adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library uh, District Board of Directors. And we'll uh, take under consideration items L1 through L4. L1 is donations report. L2 is a donation from Easley's Fun Shop, which I think is closed now. I but know. the donations That's are sad. still coming in. Yeah, yeah, very sad to see them see them close. Uh, L3, agreement with the Sun Lakes United Methodist Church. And L4 is personnel agenda. Would entertain a motion on these items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, do I have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously as well. Now we'll adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and convene as the Stadium District Board of Directors. And the uh, uh, board will consider S1, which is a personnel agenda. Do I have a motion on this item? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Now we will adjourn as the Stadium District Board of Directors and convene as the Housing Authority of Maricopa County. And we'll consider items H1 through H4. H1 is minutes. H2 is administrative correction to the general depository agreement. H3 is contract with August Building Company. And H4 is a contract with Pimix Contracting Corporation. Uh, do I have a motion on these items? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Barney. And do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That motion passes unanimously. So now we will adjourn as the Housing Authority of Maricopa County and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. And at this time, under item 80 is our public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any uh, slips uh, for public comment? Mr. Chairman, I do not have any slips for public comment. I do not have any slips for public comment. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much uh, with that. Now, earlier on in the meeting, uh, I indicated, and obviously we've had references to this throughout the meeting that this is uh, Supervisor Barney's last meeting. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a little bit of a presentation here, but if you follow Maricopa County at all, you know that we love videos. So uh, thanks to, uh, to Fields and his team, they put together a little video on Supervisor Denny Barney. Stand with Denny's a proud sun devil. I'm a proud, uh, you know, wild cat. He is definitely going to be missed here in Maricopa County. He knows ASU is always in second position. So when it comes to something like that, uh, never a rivalry there. Oh, by the way, nice plate. Go Devils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. He was. Uh, the one guy you turn to when you had discussions on, on, on land issues or even the budget, he was the, the hawk. He, he made sure that uh, if there was any questions, he was going to bring it up. How do we differentiate between specifically the reserved and the unreserved contingency? I've always respected uh, Denny uh, as a family man, a, a businessman. I just want to make sure we're not missing something member of the community. He uh, has such keen insights, brings clarity to issues. Oftentimes in politics, people will say what they think the public wants to hear or their constituency wants to hear, and he's quite the opposite. He, he's going to say what he believes and from the heart. I know he'll make us proud as he, as he leaves to go back in the East Valley and um, work on, on big issues for, for business out there. We know he'll do great things on the East Valley Partnership and uh, look forward to working with him uh, from that perspective now. Thank, 
Dry the eyes, dry the eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Here's here are the tissues. Thank you very much um, to to our team uh, for for the great uh, great video as always. I apologize, but I, I need to just take care of one business item before we we move any further. I, I would hate to forget this in the in the joy uh, and and sadness uh, of that. And just to jump back, uh, Madam Clerk, if we can to A four, I think we do have a slight change to the agenda item if we just want to clear that up for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you could reconsider item A4, which is the PetSmart grant, and I apologize, there was a slight correction to the agenda item language where it says within 30 days in order for what the agenda item says is the grant to be implemented, and that is changed to for the project to move forward. Just a little wording change there. Excellent. Thank you very much. So uh, I would entertain a motion to reconsider uh, that item then. Mr. Chairman, I move that we reconsider item A4 uh, on our agenda. Okay. We have a motion to reconsider. Do I have a second? Uh, second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the motion to reconsider. Yes. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so now we will reconsider with the new language that's just been read uh, by uh, our clerk. Uh, do I have a motion uh, on the revised uh, A4? Motion to approve the revised item A4. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Supervisor Barney. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, my apologies on that. Now, now we want to uh, uh, segue right from that uh, into uh, an opportunity for my colleagues to, to say a few words. I think everyone would like to say a few words uh, at this point to you, uh, Supervisor Barney. So with that, I'm gonna start with, um, actually I'm gonna start with, with, uh, with our clerk. Fran, if there's anything that you would like to say uh -oh. to uh, Supervisor Barney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Supervisor Barney, I am rarely at a lack for words, but I do want to thank you sincerely for all of the time that you have given to the county. And I want to thank you for sometimes the times that you have spoken very directly to me about the way things need to go. And I realize at the time sometimes I didn't appreciate it, but there's always the wonderful thing of hindsight where you do appreciate it. So I appreciate all the times that we've sometimes had to struggle with a certain issue, but I appreciate your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fran. Thank you very much. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, if it's okay, I, I really like to just make one little point of personal privilege just on a, on a, a person who is, is, um, shadowing me today. I, I was going to make this announcement earlier and, and I just forgot I was too busy looking at some other stuff. But nonetheless, um, we have a special guest here in District 5, uh, Danita Rios. Where is she? There she is. She's in the back. Um, I, I, this is really our first time really getting to know each other. I know her parents very well. Uh, her father is a former colleague or a colleague out in uh, Pinal County, uh, Supervisor Pete Rios. And her, uh, I, I'm very uh, familiar with uh, her sister, uh, Rebecca Rios, but um, I'm looking over her, her little uh, life history here, and she's done some amazing things. Uh, she's a former CEO of the Veterans uh, Directory. Uh, she was named 40 under 40 up-and-coming business leader from the Phoenix, or the Phoenix uh, Business Journal and just does a, a wonderful amount of things. We're going to spend the day with her, and I just want to welcome her and introduce her that uh, she'll be with us today. So thank you for joining us. And back to uh, the, the teary-eyed portion of our board meeting. <laughs> now, it's, uh, Mr. Barney, I think when I got on the board, I think out of, out of the current members on the board, you were the one I, I wasn't familiar with. We went out and had lunch and, and uh, get to know. But over the last uh, four years, uh, it's been an honor serving with you. Uh, as I said in the video, you were one that would point out uh, many of the items in the, uh, in the uh, agenda, let it be the budget or a zoning case that we would miss. Uh, you had that eye for it. Uh, you'll just definitely be missed. Um, 
uh, I was thinking about this driving, and I said, did I ever vote against anything he wanted? I said, I don't think I did. I only voted against Hickman and Shukri's stuff. <laughs> so you'd be proud to know that. I voted with you on all your items that you wanted. But, uh, but nonetheless, you're definitely going to be missed. Uh, I know you're going to do great things out there in the East Valley. Uh, whoever gets appointed is definitely going to have to fill some big shoes because uh, you have definitely uh, left your mark here in Maricopa County and definitely be missed. So I wish you well in your new venture there in the East Valley Partnership. I look forward to working with you uh, from the county and East Valley Partnership side. So thank you for your service. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much, Supervisor Gallardo. Supervisor Hickman. Well, um, I would say I never, being a child, as I mentioned before, the West Valley, I did not know uh, the Barney family. And it was my pleasure and privilege to learn a lot more about uh, Denny's family history. Um, and seeing, uh, being able to tell people out there as I traveled my side, like I really, really enjoy, and I still do, um, with this, even this group, being able to tell everybody that on our, on our board, it consists of multi-generational Arizonans doing the best they can for the county. And I think that gives just an ultimate, I know in my areas of Sun City, Sun City West, just a, a huge amount of respect. And I get to talk a lot about, about you guys. And uh, Denny's, a, it's just a pleasure to talk about Denny. Extremely smart, um, extremely capable. Uh, Fran alluded to it as a chairman, hard-nosed. Um, and uh, I don't know if I ever voted against something from, from Denny. I should have now, looking back on it. But um, I will uh, make sure to tell Nicole, look, he's not a weirdo when he's at the store taking pictures of eggs and playing Where's Waldo with me. I mean, he, he takes a picture of a carton of eggs and says, where do you think I am? And it's been like Hawaii, you're at Bashes, you're just by the number, the, the eggs that you buy. Continue supporting that brood, uh, feed them well. Um, I see some of them here, so uh, you guys have no idea how important you are to your father. So last thing I would say is, um, Candace, you, you, you guys were a one-two punch. Um, I, had, I was appointed to this job uh, just two months into uh, Chukri's and Denny's terms. So we were all a bunch of new guys and I got the chance to meet Candace. James is doing marginally well in comparison <laughs> uh, to helping Denny out that, that you did. So, so thanks for being here. And la last but not least, um, there's just a whole lot of love up here with, with our colleagues and I hope I'm expressing that. And because he appointed me, uh, he and Chukri appointed me two weeks into their terms. It gives me great pleasure now that after you leave that I can absolutely say Chukri is the old man of the county. And uh, I will lord over that with him as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to miss you. But Denny, our, you're such a solid fixture. We're, our paths are going to continue to cross. And I, I look forward to it and see, see what you can do out there for the East Valley and for, for uh, the people that you're going to hopefully bring in uh, to the East Valley. So. Great serving with you. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Now we'll turn over to our county manager, Joy Rich. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Barney and I actually go back quite a ways uh, from his days on our planning commission when Darren Gerard and I staffed the planning commission. And um, one of those teenagers he mentioned today was born during that period of time, so it was quite a while ago. And I think it was then that I initially was exposed to your work ethic. Um, we used to deliver our packets in crates, frankly. Um, and every single time, Supervisor Barney had read those materials, had often visited those locations, had met with applicants, and it was obvious that he was driven by making every single project better. And that's exactly what all of you have seen as, as he has been a supervisor, that work ethic, that drilling down, and leaving your legacy layer by layer and improving every process, everything we do, keeping us challenged, keeping us on our toes, um, and being very thorough and measured and studied in everything you do. And frankly, we tease you about whipping out the calculator and everything, but we love that you know math. And uh, <laughs> we, we count on you in that regard to, to double check everything that we've done, hold us accountable. And like I said, um, you've made your legacy layer by layer here, and you will not be forgotten. So thank you. Thank you, Joy. 
Thank you so much, Joy. And um, finally, just want to just want to thank all all of your members of your family that have joined us today. Great to see Tom Manos out there uh, as well, our former county manager. And I think you know all these people here who who love you and care about you says a lot about you. And and we've known each other for a long time. Unfortunately, had a shorter time to serve with you than than the others, but. Um, uh, you know, from the first time I met you, Denny, uh, I was struck by what a what a solid individual you were. What a great family man you are. Uh, we we have a lot of mutual friends, uh, and, and all of us, you know, have such admiration for you and what you've done in business, uh, in the community, and this next step here makes such perfect sense. Uh, it's extending that that community involvement, growing that community that you love. But having said that, you really are leaving a hole here. Um, I, I knew how smart you were before, but I guess I didn't really know uh, the level, the depth, just like Joy said, the time, the homework that you put in. Those keen insights don't just come out of thin air. They come from a combination of intelligence, but doing your homework and you do it all the time, it's done so much for the county. It is one of the main reasons that you all have had such great success as a county, as a board of supervisors. And like I said, that, uh, that certainly, uh, certainly will be missed. Um, thank you so much for the service that, that you've done. Again, you didn't need this. You didn't need this. Um, it's people like you who don't need to be in public office. We need more people like you who do it to truly serve. And I thank you for that. And, uh, and so as, a, as a, uh, a token of appreciation from the whole board and, and everyone up here, we do have a little something that I'd like to present. If I can get it here. You can, you can bring whiskey in the yeah, Damn. exactly. It's uh, it's not your father's county board of supervisors. No. <laughs> so, um, Denny, we have a a flag here of Maricopa County, and if I might, I'd like to read this inscription, and then I'll and then I'll uh, present this to you. So, this is presented to Denny Barney in recognition of your exceptional leadership and service to the citizens of Maricopa County as Maricopa County Supervisor, District One. 2013 through 2019. Thank you, Denny. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go down? Yeah. Yeah. So we're now going to head down for for little photo. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Should I bring my stuff down, or am I coming back up? So here? so we will um, we'll go down. We'll take a quick photo, okay. and then we'll we'll hop back up. All right, so at this time then, I will turn, you know, a little dangerous here, but I will turn the mic over to Supervisor Barney, and it is your time, and no, we're not going to turn the clock on, so okay, good. as much time as you need. <laughs> the reign of terror begins. Uh, thank you uh, for each of you and your kind words. It's been, it's been a delight to serve with, uh, with each one of you, and I, I'll have more to say about that, but uh, I don't want to be emotional. I just want to make a few comments, but I first want to introduce some people that are uh, very dear to me. Uh, if I could have my wife Nicole stand, um, I've got I've got some flowers I, I'm going to present to her in a minute. She loves hydrangeas, so I went to the store last night to buy these. And like so many things I attempt, if you can see the hydrangeas, look how they look this morning. <laughs> so I was going to throw them away, but I thought it'd be more meaningful to say that I made the effort. 
Um, she is, uh, it seems trite that I would give her something perishable. I shouldn't have started with her. Mm-hmm. But um, I like these beautiful uh, flowers. <clears throat> I'm not going to cry about you guys, bunch of losers. Um, <laughs> she's the most beautiful part of my life. So, sorry about the wilted hydrangeas, but there you go. I'll bring those to you. Um, and uh, right next to her, we, I have my mother and father-in-law, Les and Elaine Smith, if you'd stand. They've been great uh, advocates and have been amazing in every way. Thank you. Also have, um, I come from a large family. There's 10 of us. And uh, what we lack in uh, quality, we make up in quantity. So I've got part of that brood here. Uh, Jason, my, my elder brother, please stand, 14 months older. He, he served for a number of years on the Planning and Zoning Commission after I did. He cleaned up all the messes I created and was much more diligent. Uh, next in line, we've got my sister, Deanne, and her husband, Kate, if you'd please stand. Uh, 14 months below me, yeah, my parents were busy. Um, and not far behind her, my sister Jennifer and her husband Talon, and they're grateful that they're here, and they're such a, a great blessing to me. I love them, and, and I've got others. We wouldn't want to over, overwhelm, the, uh, overwhelm the auditorium, so we didn't invite the rest. Um, <laughs> uh, a little further back, I've got uh, two of my uh, dearest friends, if you'd stand. Yeah, you two. <laughs> Frick and frack. That's uh, David Pothier and Bill Oakland. Uh, they've been with me uh, since the very beginning that uh, I decided to jump into office. Bill's one of those guys where I said, hey, I need help financially. He pulls out his checkbook and writes a check. Dave has been my confidant on the canal and, uh, you know, my advisor. Um, he also is the recipient of two Ladmo bags, which is pretty offensive to me since I have never received one. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that was on the record, David. We'll come back to that. Thank you both for being here and your support. I see my friend Steve Watson in the back. Uh, definitely the best hair in all of Maricopa County. Steve, thank you, our superintendent of public instruction. And it's been fun to serve with you and and uh, and uh, to be part of what you're doing. So thank you. And then I've got to mention uh, Tom Manos, one of my, truly one of my heroes in the world of civil service. The guy's a warrior and... Uh, um, miss having him around. It's good to see his smile. So, so with that, just a quick, um, today, uh, for, for, you know, for many of you, you've suffered through these board meetings. You know all about it. Today, we blasted through maybe 100 agenda items. We were six different boards in the matter of minutes as we put hats on and off. Um, there's a lot of details. Fran had us go back to one item because it wasn't just right. And that's what we do. We try to get it just right. Um, beneath these agendas, which are hundreds of pages, are hundreds or thousands of hours of work from a staff level and from a board level, from our staffs that we, that we get to work with and privileged to work with on a frontline basis. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes into making it happen. Uh, Maricopa County is 9,200 square miles. It's larger than a number of the states on the eastern seaboard. More people in Maricopa County than maybe 25 states. Total population, $2.5 billion budget. Those are pretty, um, pretty significant resources that, that the five of us get to manage and work alongside our elected colleagues and 13,000 uh, great uh, employees of Maricopa County. It takes a ton of work. Um, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to share that because for me, uh, Maric- oh, I want you to see this picture. I had them put it back up there because... That picture, there was no makeup. That was right at the beginning of my elected service. This is what six years of elected office will do. <laughs> I can see this right here, and it's amazing um, what time and service will do to, uh, to somebody that, uh, that's willing to commit. But, uh, so you can take that down. I don't want to see it anymore. Thank you. <laughs> um, but life's about dreams. And... Um, you know, for me as a boy, I had a couple of dreams that I remember profoundly. One, I used to get a magazine in the mail called Boy's Life. I don't know if any of you got that. The very back of the magazine, they had this section of different things you could buy. And there was a kit for a hovercraft that you could make out of a vacuum cleaner. 
I always wanted that, and my parents would never let me buy it. They said it was a horrible idea and it wouldn't work. And I couldn't believe that I was so oppressed and put down that I couldn't have a hovercraft. And I also wanted to, uh, growing up here, I think all of us did, and Steve as well, the Wallace Ladmo. I wanted Ladmo back. That was another one of my dreams. That's why I pointed out David getting two, which I think is a, another offensive thing that he got two and I got none. Um, and sometimes dreams come true and sometimes they don't. I never got a Ladmo bag and I never got a hovercraft. Um, and somewhere along the way, those dreams changed, uh, shifted to something more meaningful. Um, most certainly it included, um, you know, finding, <clears throat> finding an amazing wife and having my own family. I knew I wouldn't have 10 kids for sure, but I knew I wanted to have a big family and I wanted to have them close. And as crazy as it seems, I also wanted to serve in elected office someday. And in high school, that was always the joke. I don't know why, I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it happened, but that was a dream. And so, you know, magically, I, I got the first. We uh, celebrated our 25th anniversary this last year. We've got four amazing kids. And then the second of serving in public office. It accidentally came true in 2012 when I got elected. And, you know, after campaigning for a year and a half, you're like the dog that catches the car you've been chasing. You're like, now what? And you get in and you start drinking from a fire hose and all these things that you thought you knew. You realize you don't know anything and you're, you're just out of your league. And that's where it really got interesting is that in the process of trying to fulfill that dream, now that, I was, now that it was here, I had to figure out how to manage through the labyrinth of government and bureaucracy at a scale that I wasn't used to. And I came from a family business where I was in a leadership role and we had you know, a few hundred employees and it was really great and it made sense and I got here where nothing made sense. The way that we talk about budgets and the way that we uh, detail those things and the the structure was different. It just wasn't the way that I was accustomed. And it took a, took a bit. I was, I was, it was really stressful, uh, probably why that picture looks so different than I do now. Um, but as it, as it happened, I learned a lot. Of, I learned a lot. I learned a great deal. Uh, my perspective changed uh, dramatically. And I'm not going to ramble on too long, I promise. But I learned, and I was reminded time and time again that, uh, that things that I would never dream about because I take them for granted aren't necessarily the things that other people have. Come to find out you know there's a lot of people that don't have shelter They don't have food. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love being part of a county. Man, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> Got some allergies. Uh, I love being part of a county that, that works to, to tackle those issues head on. I see Bruce back here, and Tom was a big part of that as a board. It's something that we've engaged the, uh, from our human services perspective. Um, there's thousands of miles of roads that where I live, the roads are great. There's lots of places where people don't have good roads, and, and the county's working to solve that. Um, I've never gotten food poisoning from a restaurant in Maricopa County. Why? Because we've got good people that go out. Now, some of you maybe have um, picked different restaurants, but I've been lucky. And I think in large part, that's thanks to people that take their jobs and manage that process. And we've got a health uh, department that helps keep us safe from illnesses. We've got protection from floods. Um, and, you know, you see around the country, around the world where people are losing their lives, you know, we've been blessed that that hasn't been a huge challenge for us. We're not, uh, 
immune to it, but it's something that we've been able to tackle as a county. We've got amazing libraries. We've got a criminal justice system that works. Not perfectly. Nothing ever is, but uh, due to smart justice and efforts to not just put the bad people in jail, but to help those that want to succeed to get out and, and find pathways to success. You know, I've, I've, I've learned that we have a government that does, that, that does whatever we invite it to do and that it can be more aligned with our businesses and our communities if we can direct it in such a way. And, and that's, while the change is slow and it should be in an organization this large, I've learned those things and I've learned that, that we can make a difference. And so I just want to conclude my service here with uh, really a big thank you. Um, for those that have put up with my tenacity, um, you know, I just kind of, I, 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 I'm kind of a one trick pony, I guess. I just keep saying the same things and hope that eventually somebody will listen and, and they do, <laughs> maybe just out of, you know, wanting me to stop. But uh, ultimately, I, I, like each of you, I have things that are important to me and I believe in and I, and I hope that I've been able to to swing back that pendulum of how we as a government hold that regulatory hammer, the way that we spend your two and a half billion dollars of hard earned taxpayer resources, the way that we handle the most vulnerable and needy in our community. So it's been awesome. And I couldn't have done it without great colleagues on the board, without Fran and Joy. And, and I look out there and see a lot of familiar faces, some that have gone on and, and, and moved on to other things, but uh, it's been an incredible run and I'm grateful. I just wanna spend just a, couple, just a couple quick minutes and do some quick thank yous. If I could invite uh, um, Candace and James to come forward, I've got something for them. Um, uh, you know, I've already kind of, you know, embarrassed Candace a little bit. She, she doesn't like to ever be in the limelight yet. She's a tremendous worker and a tremendous uh, colleague and a friend and her value is beyond measure the work that she's done for the county and so I wanted to just present her with the plaque and when she uh, when I uh, announced that I would be uh, migrating off the board sometime in 2019 uh, we went to work on making sure that there was the right opportunity for her and when the city of Mace opportunity came around it was a perfect fit and it was bittersweet because I knew I was going to lose both my right and my left arm here at the county but that she was gonna go to a great place. And so um, I'm grateful for her, for her work, for her service. All of you have worked with her, know how tremendous she is and what uh, great capacity she has. And, and then James uh, said, hey, I'll, I'll come in and help you. Wouldn't, wouldn't accept any payment. He just said, I'll show up and go to work and I'll be here. James spent many years here before and he knows his way around the county and, and it was a, a quick study for him, and, and I'm grateful for his willingness to come in. So I'd like to present each of them with a quick plaque, Mr. Chairman, if I could do that. Absolutely. Same thing, presented with James Cameron, the Chief of Staff, District, uh, Board of Supervisors of District 2. When he was here before, he was, dist he was District 2, now he's District 1. I don't know if they gave a nice plaque like this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and free and he literally donates the time to the guy in trouble. You deserve, uh, you deserve a great deal in a, in a plaque, but either one of them is not enough for this uh, token of our appreciation. Takes time. <laughs> We're almost done. We're almost done. Okay. Um, why don't uh, 
I don't, I, are those mics on down there? If I come down there? Yeah, yes. Okay. Here, let me, let me give these to each of you. Chairman Gates. Thank you. Supervisor, this is a half hand set down to Steve. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Hickman. Yeah. Yep. Better not be a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay, so as I mentioned, I never got a Ladmo, a Ladmo bag, which is the things that dreams are made of. So I've I kind of prepared my own Ladmo bag for each of you. And uh, uh, it's a Denny bag. But in here, I've got a few items. Let's start, if you'll pull this out. Um, each of you, this is Supervisor Chukri's bag. I may or may not give it to him since he's not here. But in there, you're going to find a hydro flask uh, with the county logo and your, and your name on it. Under our new chairman, you're going to need to bring water to these meetings. They're long and slow, and so I'm hopeful that you'll, you'll come hydrated and prepared. It's a little bit different cadence, but, uh, you know, you'll need that. Um, uh, speaking to the chairman, there's a, there's a mug that each of you will see in there. Um, it's a beautiful Maricopa County mug. Now... Uh, our chairman loves coffee, as we saw from his uh, from his uh, video when he was uh, brought in as a chairman. Each of it, each of your mugs says the world's greatest county supervisors. Uh, I think uh, because in your own way you're each uh, incredible. And so, Bill, as an honor to you and your chairman, this uh, chairmanship, your love for coffee, that's that's something. Inside that uh, inside that mug, you'll see. Uh, pull it out there. There's a little whistle. Yeah, this, they, this isn't the dollar store craft that you got in a Ladmo bag. This is a very high quality um, stainless steel whistle that has your name on it and the district that you serve. I uh, called up uh, Mr. Isham and said, hey, what can I get Clint? And he said, I don't know. He has everything. And I said, well, give me some ideas. He said, how about a whistle? <laughs> You know, he's always coaching his kids sporting events. And so each of you get a whistle. And while Clint, that was something that uh, was specific, specifically directed to you. I know how each of you feel about your families and those that you serve. I know, Steve, you've coached teams. And Clint, you've coached teams. And Bill, I saw the way you beamed with, with your daughters here. And I know the way that Supervisor Chukri feels about his two boys. And I feel the same about mine. So there's a whistle. You may need this from time to time to kind of get everybody rallied around. All right, take out the next thing here. This is for Supervisor Gallardo. He, uh, he seems to be late to uh, just about every meeting, and so I've, I've got him an alarm clock um, that will hopefully help him be more timely. Um, but uh, this, is, this is what I would say about Steve. Uh, even though he may be late from time to time, that is not indicative of his commitment and service. That guy works harder every weekend than any of us I know in terms of the work that he does. So he, he, mo he may roll out of bed late or whatever the case. Not with this you won't. This thing is loud. Um, but uh, certainly appreciate your service and know how committed you are. Um, and then lastly, each of you have in, in your mug, you have a tie. Um, and this was kind of in honor of uh, Supervisor Chukri. We, he and I were on, a, on an economic development mission for GPEC a couple years ago. <laughs> he, bought, uh, he bought me, he ha took me to a tie shop there he was super excited about and bought me a tie. And I wanted to buy each of you a tie in his honor, but also, uh, you know, his effort to help elevate the board in terms of the decorum and the, and the way that we represent those that we serve. And I think we've done that. And I think that uh, this tie is emblematic of, of the work that we've, that we've uh, united uh, uh, together in, in doing. Now, it's not, uh, shouldn't be lost on anybody that su uh, Supervisor Gallardo's tie is red <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the others are blue. Uh, that's, it, that's in the spirit of unity, gentlemen. Uh, we, uh, we are stronger when we're united. And uh, today we had, uh, you know, pretty much, I think, unanimous on every vote. That doesn't mean that it's unanimous when we sit in e-session and we're banging through issues. When we get here, we generally find a way to be united, and there's strength in that. And I, I, hope, you'll, I hope you'll continue that uh, legacy. 
um, and that's been something that's, that's been important to me. I think you both joked about never voting against me. That's because we tried to do things in a way that would help move forward the work of the county in a way that's positive. Uh, last thing. Uh, Joy joked about the calculator. <laughs> it's time that you pick up the baton here. Um, it's solar, so you'll never run the battery out. Um, there's not no bomb or any embedded explosive devices, but uh, hey, things are good right now. The county is is healthy financially. It won't always be so. Keep this calculator close, and we've got uh, tremendous resources at, at a professional staff level with Joy and Cindy and the OMB team, and and uh, the uh, assistant deputy county manager. I mean, we are so blessed to have uh, incredible people uh, that that help us manage the financial house that uh, that we have the duty to do and. Uh, and two and a half billion dollars is a lot of money in the world that uh, that I live, and that's a lot of money that that we have the responsibility. That you now have the responsibility to manage, and and I want this to be a reminder of how important every dollar and every cent is as we go about that uh, that sacred duty. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I just I want to conclude my remarks with. Um, you know, while I've never received a LADMO bag, none of you can now say that you've never received a LADMO bag. Uh, this is my version, but I hope it comes to you uh, with uh, all the sincerity intended that each of you, in each of your ways, uh, have left a significant mark on me, and, and you will continue to do so at the county, and I'm grateful for the privilege that it's been here to serve with you. And again, to those that have uh, were kind enough to drive downtown and to be here, thank you for those of you that have uh, that I've had the privilege of working alongside. I, I see, uh, I see the the chiefs and the others that uh, that we work with. What a tremendous blessing they are, uh, and uh, just grateful for all that I've been able to learn and experience here. So, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn the mic back to you, and we can move it on. Thank, thank you so much, Supervisor Barney. I think I speak on behalf of my colleagues in, in saying that, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't get a LADMO bag either, but the Denny bag is is much better. Um, very, very generous and very kind and very thoughtful. Uh, and again, thank you for all your service. And with that, it, what I would like to do is as your, your final action, uh, as a member of the Board of Supervisors, if I could pass this over to you and have you gavel us out, it would be my honor for the last time to gavel us out of a meeting, Mr. Chairman. And uh, with this, we'll uh, invite you to come upstairs. We have a little reception, I think, planned. Thank you to, to Fran and everybody for their work in putting that together. And Joy, your office. I'm not sure who did it, but thank you, Joy. Thank you. So we'll gavel out and we'll adjourn upstairs if, uh, until, until we get upstairs if you want to join us. Thank you.